start getting notifications. So it's a convenient way for you to go back in time and get some missed notifications to be able to see it. Uh, and then last but not least, preferences. So you can uh, change your email options. You can uh, get the notifications sent to you uh, individually as they come in, or you can uh, have them, if you don't like HTML email, turn them back to plain text. And you can check on or check off um, any of the notification categories to determine whether you will to get them by web or by email. Uh, for current users, by default, email is opt-in, which means that you have to check in uh, most of these notifications except the top page messages, which are enabled by default. Um, so there it is. It's a basically a, a, a simple tool with a, a set of features that uh, seems to work pretty effectively for the user who talks to. And now what I'd like to do is turn it over to Calzari, who's going to give us a little demo uh, about how the tool works in action. Hey guys. So I'm going to give a quick demo just to give you an idea of some of the uh, workflows involved uh, in notifications. If, you, if you're on English Wikipedia, you're probably already familiar with some of these. Uh, so this will probably be more for the benefit of people on other wikis. Um, so for this demo, I'm going to pretend that I'm user Johnny Demo, and I've just signed into my account. And I see at the top here there's a little red number next to my name. This lets me know that I have one new notification. So I'm going to click on it and see what it's about. And that opens up the flyout, and uh, it looks like another user named Jane Finch and some other people have left a message on my talk page. So I'm going to click on the link here, and it'll take me to my talk page so I can see what was going on. So let's see. I'll go down. Uh, it says, uh, yeah, there's a, a whole bunch of people. Uh, so look, Jane Finch says, a uh, nice article on Tam Valley. You're on the roll. OK, so I'm going I'm to reply to her um, on my talk page. So I'm going to edit it here. Probably even 
important meetings, you can see exactly what uh, what sort of change was made. Uh, in this case, you can see that it actually remembers that I already thanked them for this revision. So it's not going to let me thank twice for that one. So if I wanted, I could go into another div here, here, and then I could thank them for this one. And then if I switch back to Johnny Demo, I should have a new notification or two. There, and I see the new thanks from Jane. And so now I'm very happy that I've had a positive interaction with Jane. And now we're best we be friends. <laughs> and actually, if we uh, refresh the inbox, we may even have, yeah, look, we have a few more, uh, new email messages. So. Yeah, OK, so here's an example of one of the HTML emails that you can see. I have a question. Uh, what I see notification. I see a lot of white space because I'm used to this kind of notification on other website. It looks like white space so there can be more messages on a page. Is it by design you have so much white space? We find that in general, uh, uh, adding white space actually creates more pleasant user experiences. When you have uh, pages that are very cluttered with a lot of text, it makes people feel a little bit more stressed. So it's common practice uh, in the modern designs to actually leave a little bit more space so people feel less stressed. Uh, and if you compare how many of the top uh, websites do it, you'll find out that this design practice is pretty common now. Um, and uh, uh, you know, we're trying to get uh, people who are new to this uh, experience to uh, feel more comfortable with it. So it's important that we provide the same level of comfort uh, on uh, this uh, site that's on the other site that we participate in. Can you put out a, in a preference something um, we certainly could consider it, but in general, uh, I mean, there are some design conventions. They exist for a reason. Uh, designers have spent a lot of time to uh, basically examine uh, how users behave and, and what makes users more comfortable. And in general, some of these design practices appear to be effective. Um, but uh, it's duly noted, and if a lot of people request and preference, we'll definitely consider it. But also, also in, in general, we've tried to limit the number of preferences to, to not make it overwhelming. Because I think, especially for notifications, it's, it's really easy to create an overwhelming preferences system. Um, so while, you know, for options that the community really wants, we're willing to implement those. But uh, just for like making little tweaks to things, we probably in most cases want to avoid adding lots of preferences for those, and maybe just try to build consensus around what makes the most sense for the most users. Okay, let's uh, take a look at some of the metrics that we've collected so far about this tool. It's been uh, on the English Wikipedia for about three months now. Uh, during that time, we sent uh, 1.2 million notifications. About 19 million users uh, have been served, whether or not they were active and actually uh, took a look at them is a different story. Uh, but by and large, it's uh, definitely, uh, uh, there's quite there are a pretty high number of notifications that have gone out. And if you look at uh, how the different categories compare, about 38%, the largest group of notifications is for welcome and get started notifications. Then it's talk page messages, about 36%. Uh, then edit reverts, uh, page reviews, page links, mentions, and thanks. Um, and uh, we think that the uh, number of mentions, the number of thanks may in, in fact turn out to be an indicator of the health of a community because it's usually an indication that people are communicating with each other a little bit more and in the case of thanks being more civil. So we're hopeful that some of these positive notifications and these civil exchanges will in fact uh, help the community uh, members, particularly the new members, uh, feel more comfortable and more at home with the uh, encyclopedia. Um, if you look at the metrics dashboards, you can see the trends are pretty steady. There's no radical differences over time between these different uh, uh, types of notifications. Um, we did an A-B test result, and we compared the users that had the echo notifications tool with users that did not have it, that had pre-echo conditions. Um, and we found that uh, these uh, echo editors made more edits 
uh, on average about 2.4% uh, more. Um, so they were definitely, it helped them become a little bit more active, but they were also reverted a little bit more on the order of 2% and blocked a little bit more on the order of 1%. Uh, this is actually pretty typical of uh, uh, several of our editor engagement programs. Uh, we found that these tools can in fact increase the activity, uh, but you do get a little bit of a dip in terms of the reverts and the blocks. Yes? Um, were those numbers not statistically significant? Could you speak a little bit louder? Oh, were those numbers found to be statistically significant? Uh, well, we were looking at events uh, on the order of uh, 11,000 people that participated in the test. So I would say, from what I can tell, that they would be statistically significant. However, it was a short test, about one week long. Uh, and um, it, you know, the, it would be probably a good idea for us to do more in the test in order to get more information. But by and large, we, uh, uh, the takeaways from the AB test uh, is that we don't see any real uh, cause for alarm. Uh, and in fact, we're pleased to see that there's a slight increase in the number of others. Um, we also surveyed users. About 1,000 users were surveyed during that uh, about a three-month period. And about 65% of the users found notifications useful, and about 16% found them not useful. And those surveys were basically there was a little feedback link inside the flyout and inside the archive page that people could click on and uh, respond to the survey. Question? How big was the response rate for this? Sorry, I didn't hear that. How big was the response rate for the survey? Uh, it's hard to tell because uh, we didn't measure impressions uh, for the flyout. Uh, so we can't really tell you. And, uh, for the survey, I would say that that's probably less statistically significant because it's a small user group, but we're just conveying the information as one more indicator. But I would place uh, more uh, weight on the A-B test and the dashboards than I would on the survey. But it is one more indicator. Um, so one of the things that make not notifications interesting is that uh, they uh, enable what we call engagement <coughs> This is a term that uh, our teacher engineering director, uh, Terry Shea, has used uh, often. Is that the idea that if we can create a loop where you get a notification and it gets you to make a contribution and perhaps start a collaboration, that is a really healthy thing to happen. And we think that notifications can play a role in creating these engagement groups and getting people more involved in the process. Um, so this is one of the reasons that we uh, create notifications. Another of the reasons uh, was that it's a fundamental piece of infrastructure for many of our other editor engagement programs that need to have some kind of a way to send uh, notifications to someone else. So for example, um, we're now working on some multimedia tools that will have a special notification that will be sent to you if your file that you uh, uploaded has been used on an article. So there's another example of notification that can have a positive effect by making people uh, feel appreciated that their work was actually useful. Uh, and if the notification wasn't there, they wouldn't know about this unless they went back and visited their page. Uh, and in general, we find that notifications can have a, a potential uh, benefit in getting people more engaged. So uh, next steps for notifications is um, we've been on the encyclopedia, English encyclopedia for three months now. Uh, things uh, seem to be going well. Uh, community seems to be appreciating that as far as we can tell. So we're ready to now make it available to other languages. Um, and on August 20th, uh, we'll be releasing it on four Wikipedias, the French Wikipedia, Polish Wikipedia, Portuguese, and Swedish Wikipedia. And uh, we're really, really glad to be able to make this tool available in other languages. And uh, in uh, September, we'll probably have another batch, and again in October. And hopefully by the end of the year, we should have it on most Media wiki projects that uh, uh, wants notifications. Another thing that we're doing is we're now making notifications available via mobile. So uh, currently they're in alpha on mobile. They should be in beta shortly. And uh, then they'll go to stable version uh, you know, as soon as uh, they're comfortable with it. And as I mentioned, the multimedia team is also going to create a number of notifications. We'll continue to support other developers and other projects who want to create special notifications for their communities. And uh, our team was now moving on to uh, other projects, like the Flow project, which uh, you may have uh, uh, heard about. And uh, as for myself, I'll be moving to multimedia, and Calvary is moving on 
to uh, uh, the uh, mobile team. Uh, we left a nice legacy behind us with the notification project. And I think now is a good time to take uh, more questions. Up there. Okay, so uh, one of the things is that, so I'd like to use this uh, notification mechanism for a number of things. And uh, one thing I'm worried about is, is it possible to withdraw a notification before it's uh, being seen, it has been seen? I didn't hear your last sentence. Would it be possible to withdraw a notification before it is uh, seen? To withdraw it? Yes. Before it's seen, why would you want to do that? So suppose I sent uh, a bunch of people a request for, for assisting a third party, and one of them actually did it. I probably want to cancel uh, the notification for the others. Yeah, the system is not set up to do that. I mean, notifications get fired as soon as uh, you take action. Uh, so whatever trigger uh, would trigger that will get it out. So it's not um, it's not really designed at this point to do that. No, sorry. But plus, the notification is also uh, notifications also function through email. So obviously, you know, when you're dealing with email, there's only so much you can do to undo things. Um, but theoretically, we could build you know an interface to undo the web notifications. But currently, there isn't anything. I find the most interesting thing about notifications is being told about page links. Because this wasn't something that I could know about before very easily at all. I mean, I could look at what links here for every page I've, I've created, but that's never going to happen. Um, this is information we couldn't get before. Why did you decide to include it? You're talking about page links? Yeah. Um, we um, were a little concerned that for someone who's already created a page link um, for a popular page, if a lot of people are linking to that page, they might end up getting a lot of notifications and it might start feeling like spam. So we were worried that, that uh, for those users it would create uh, a situation where they would feel uncomfortable. And so we thought it would be better to have it be an opt-in uh, notification. So you no, can just go in and check no, I mean, the box. Sorry, I, I'm confused. What, what, sorry, what was that? Why did you Why did you suddenly say this is a thing we need to notify? I like it. It's great. I love it. But why did it occur to you as a thing to create a notification for? We never knew about it before. Oh, it seemed like a pretty obvious thing to do. Uh, you know, in, in terms of we were looking for notifications that would send you some positive reinforcement. We thought it was really, really important uh, to provide more positive feedback to folks. We have a lot of, uh, we're really good at giving negative feedback at folks, but we're not so good at giving positive feedback. And research suggests that positive feedback is very effective at getting people motivated and engaged. And this seemed like one of the opportunities where we could actually practically implement it. So are you still looking for other sort of small positive sort of reinforcement messages like The more that? the better. Yeah, yeah. And any ideas is welcome. We, we've ended feature development for this release of notifications. And the team is moving on to flow, so they're going to be busy for a while. But we hope that in 2014, we could maybe uh, set some uh, a few sprints aside to do more notifications once we're caught up with flow. So uh, as far as uh, I'm concerned, my hope is that this is just the beginning. Uh, we provided the base infrastructure with a dozen basic uh, notifications, but we hope that many more will be created when they make sense. Question over there. Have you looked at the image namespace? So I'm specifically thinking common but obviously it exists on the image GPS as well. So if someone uses an image, stats included and stuff like that. Yes, actually, uh, I'm now product manager for the multimedia team. And uh, file notifications is a high priority for us. Uh, we plan to develop those in the next quarter, in the uh, October, November, uh, December time frame. Uh, so, uh, it is pretty important because that's an area where uh, you can actually provide some notifications that don't exist yet. Like this, your, your file was used on an art article seems very promising uh, and uh, should again provide more positive feedback. Over there. So Here. what's the, uh, what, what's your guys' interest in, in looking at notifications and how people use them? Is there any, any time or resources set aside to exploring how people are using them or or uh, how, how the system's being adopted or anything like that? Uh, well, we hope that we'll be able to do some research, and actually we hope that we'll be able to do work with you, Eric. <laughs> uh, the, the, in particular, we're interested in finding out what, uh, what are the um, effects of positive and negative notifications. So for example, uh, an edit revert. 
Does uh, receiving a notification about an edit revert, does this mo motivate you to uh, go in and fix uh, whatever needed to be fixed uh, regarding your last edit? And does it encourage you to edit more? Um, and similarly, a thanks notification. Is it in fact effective in encouraging you to, uh, to contribute more? So this is one particular area where I would love to see more research. And also I think that we have an opportunity to try to find out more about why uh, people who edit a little bit more when they have echo are doing so. And I don't think we know that. We, 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 know, we noticed during our A-B test that there was an increase in the number of notifications, but we don't know why that is. So our hope is that we can actually have a little bit more research done uh, in order to answer these research questions. Yes? I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I love the thanks feature so much. Uh, I can't, like, I honestly can't think of um, a feature that a website provided that, like, actively made me, like, this really happy the way that it did the first time I got one, and I really love having the ability to, to use it. So. Why, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, Calvary and I were just, you know, mulling over for, you know, several weeks ago. But how can we give a positive feedback? And you know, we explored every alternative. We looked at all sorts of different ways. And in the end, Calvary says, you know, I think the thanks notification is really our best bet of all of them. So uh, I, I'm glad that we you know, moved forward to this. And I'm, I'm glad that it makes you happy, and it makes me happy when I get thanked as well. And many people I talk to also will say that they're happy. They're happy to get thanked, and they're also happy to thank people. It's just such a convenient way to show your appreciation your gra gratitude. Actually, Brandon Harris calls it micro-gratitude. And I think that that's actually a great way to describe it. So I'm glad we had an opportunity to release it. Andrew? I know only 4% of notifications are thanks, but is that enough to do any research on whether receiving thanks is more likely to have a positive result from receiving any notification at all? Uh, well, first, my hope is that that number will increase because right now it's, it's relatively low because we deployed it about a month after we deployed everything else. We were worried that if we included thanks at launch that some community members might object to it as being too much like Facebook or something. Uh, so we were being a little bit prudent and we deployed it later. So I think that the reason it shows that 2% uh, is part of the fact that it was uh, deployed a month later. Um, but uh, you're basically looking at somewhere on the average of uh, about uh, 300 notifi uh, thanks notification a day are being sent out. So if you do the research over a period of several months, I think that you should be able to get enough uh, users to be able to make uh, uh, reasonable uh, conclusions based on, uh, based on the data. And, and my hope is that it will increase over time. And my hope is that the communities where thanks is used more perhaps might be, in fact, more pleasant and more enjoy enjoyable communities to work in. Uh, it's just a hypothesis at this point, uh, and we'll have to find out if it proves to be 